Welcome to the complete collection of Shaquille O'Neal's greatest stories, told by NBA players and legends. If you have missed any of the other episodes in this series, there is a playlist link in the description box down below and on the top right corner of your screen. If you would like to make a recommendation on a player you would like to see an episode on, be sure to comment down below which player you would like to see next. And thank you to everyone who recommended I make an episode on Shaq. Lastly, if you do enjoy this video, I would really appreciate if you guys could hit that like button. These episodes do take me a long time to edit and create, so I'd really appreciate it if you could just quickly hit that like button. If you are new and you think you may enjoy these types of videos, be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on so you don't miss an episode in this series. Without further ado, welcome to the complete collection of Shaquille O'Neal's greatest stories. Shaq. I was on damn, near, damn near unstoppable. You know, he was a force that nobody's ever seen. And so we're playing Orlando, and Shaq hauls off and he hits Alvin Robinson, and he hit him, and Alvin did like this. I remember that. Shaq gets away with what I would consider murder. This is intentionally throwing the ball. I never did that. Reggie's not buying any of this. You lean on me, spin, boom, got you, bam. And I almost would rather him have kicked my ass for the fact that he didn't even recognize that I was there. <laughs> If Shaq had your work, he'd be the greatest of all greatest time. Greatest of all time by sure. Miles. He, uh, he'd be the first to tell you that. Oh, get out of here! Another great LA story is, of course, Shaq was on top of his game. You know, he's, they were winning every year, um, and you know, he was a force that nobody's ever seen. So, Coach Nelson, Donnie had the idea. Okay, you're gonna guard Shaq. And I kind of looked at him and I was like, okay, is this a joke? He's like, every time he crosses half court, you just stand in front of him. You basically front him everywhere he goes. And when, when they lob it over, here comes big Sean Bradley. And then you guys kind of trap him and it's going to work. And the game starts right away. He, of course, kind of seals me. I get around, lob comes, Sean comes. He basically elbows us both out of the way and dunks it as hard as he could. And Next time around, same thing. So, of course, the plan didn't work at all. We were both way too skinny to handle him. He ended up having like 46 points. I mean, just, just dunking on us. And he was just, he was so much bigger than everybody, so much wider, but he was so agile. And so he had a good touch around the basket. And he just his footwork and powerful. I mean, he was, so that was, that was my Shaq story. I tried to guard him, and uh, he, you know, he left the game with 46 and probably 24 or something. the last time you guarded him. <laughs> yeah, that was the only time I ever guarded Shaq. Who would Shaq be if he had your work ethic? He'd be the greatest of all time. If Shaq had your work ethic? He'd be the greatest of all greatest time. Greatest of all time by For sure. He, uh, he'd be the first to tell you that. For sure. I mean, this guy was a, a force like I have never seen. I mean, it was crazy. You know, a guy at that size, generally guys at that size are a little timid and they don't want to be tall. They don't want to be big. Man, this dude was, he did not care. He was mean. He was nasty. He was competitive. He was vindictive. I mean, he was, yeah. I wish he was in the gym. I would have had fucking 12 rings. He had the work ethic. My God, yeah. We ain't be close. My first year we were playing, and uh, he kept posting up. But they kept fouling him, so he kept going to the free throw line. He kept missing him. And so he'd throw the ball out to me. I'm not throwing that shit back in there. Right? <laughs> so I kept shooting him, right? So we get in the timeout, and he's like, hey, hey, uh, hey, I'm open. I'm like, okay. And so we go out, and same thing. Come, Hey, 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 I'm open. Okay. There you go. <laughs> you come back in. Hey, dude, you got to throw me the ball. I said, man, fuck that. Get it off the rebound if I miss, bro. <laughs> you told him this. First year. 18 years old, man. 18 years old. <laughs> and I must have been out of my damn mind. I'll tell you the story. So Shaq gets an offensive rebound, and the coaches say, he's a 50% shooter. You got to foul him, and don't let him get an end one. You know, our coaches would always say, if Shaq gets the ball down low and you're coming to help, you got to foul him. And so every single game you had people. I remember one game you got it underneath, and I 
swung as hard as I possibly could. Took the elevator ride. Got you. Yeah, took the elevator ride up. Felt like I broke my wrist. To my credit, you didn't get the basket. You had to go to the free throw line, which was our goal. So he gets an offensive rebound. I'm behind him, right? And he comes down and he goes up, and I'm like, I got a foul shot. And I come down, two hands as hard as I can, like, like almost like a horse collar. But I'm just gonna like, like I'm gonna just destroy this man, right? Like it's not gonna be good. And I'm afraid as I'm doing it, like, damn, this is Shaq. I can't believe I'm doing this to Shaq. And I went down. And I went to grab him, and instead of my hand, like. See how my hand could wrap around my shoulder? It was like I hit, like, cement. I just went, boom, he went up and he dunked it. So as soon as he went up and dunked it, I'm thinking, oh, my God, he's going to kick my ass. Like, I don't I, this is, like, the worst position I could be in. And I almost would rather him have kicked my ass for the fact that he didn't even recognize that I was there. <laughs> it was way worse for my ego. Like, I was thinking to myself, like, Oh shit, I'm gonna get my ass kicked by Shaq in front of everybody. And he just walked to the free throw line. Like I I like I felt so insignificant. I almost quit the NBA at that point. I was just like, you know what? I'm probably not an NBA player. He doesn't remember that. He don't remember you even hitting him. No. no. <laughs> You're right. If I gave this guy everything I had and he went up and dunked it like I wasn't even there. There's a lot of stories about your generosity. I don't think a lot of people know. Some of them they do, but You've given players money to buy suits. Most rookies, when they come in, they go crazy, including me. I went crazy. Mm -hmm. There's 12 guys on the team, including Mark. 11 guys are doing what guys with money do. Sure. And it's one guy that's not. Okay. So when you got 11 guys and you want everybody to be collective, everybody, da 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 da. I was going to, nah, Mark ain't doing that. Mark's not doing that at all. Stay away from him. Don't invite him out. Don't be bringing certain people around him. Don't do that, because he told me, he said, Shay, I don't do that. So I don't do that, I don't, I don't talk to women, I'm waiting until I get married. And it was, it was awesome to hear, because mm -hmm. I've never heard that before. And I said, okay, so it was my job to protect him. Mad Dog, You yeah, gave, you gave him money to give a down payment on a new car? I did, because Mad Dog is, Mad Dog was the purest NBA guy I've ever met. Yeah? He really was. I, uh, he came into the locker room one day, and he said, who in the world is driving that Toyota Astro van? <laughs> and, and I raised my head and said, Shaq, it's me. He said, you are not rolling into the Staples Center driving that beat-up Toyota minivan. Okay. So he took me car shopping. We're all in Mercedes, Ferraris, Lexuses, and Lamborghinis, and Marcus, and I'm like, Mark. He offered to buy you a car? He offered to put a down payment on the car. What was the down payment? That could be like a dollar. <laughs> it's like 5000 I, I said, Shaq, oh. I'm get, yeah, I'm getting paid now. But he did give me a great deal, and then he took me uh, Wait, 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 wait. So you and Shaq roll up to the car dealership? Yeah. And he's like, I, I'm going to put a $5,000 down payment on this car. We get to the car dealership. He, he walks up to the fir first guy, and he says, take me straight to the manager. We okay. Get in, yeah, we get in there, and he says, Mr. Manager, this is Mad Dog. I'm going to buy him a car today. <laughs> of course. That's a very Shaq thing to do. So I took him to the dealership. I said, hey, this is Mark. I saw you had the little thing in the, in the, in the, in the uh, paper was $300 a month. That's the deal we want. Don't try to overtalk us. This is Mark. That's what he want. Get him a truck. So, you know, because you know, everybody has, has a truck. So I said, we're going to get him a Suburban or a Tahoe. Because I just wanted to make him be, be part of the team, but not really. Yeah. But, so so what'd you get? Uh, it was a blue Chevy Tahoe. A Chevy Tahoe. Yeah. Not so flashy. Not so flashy, you know, but it, got the, it was great. It was a great car. And, and Shaq uh, approved. Shaq approved. Okay. And he paid $5,000. He offered to. I, oh. I, I insisted no. But then after that, he took me to uh, the big and tall store. He shelled out $7,000. <laughs> the NBA player. No, yeah. Shaq, I want to say, I want to take your money. I said, I'm, we're going to do that, but I'm going to introduce you to some people where you do that. Like, suit costs $1,000, but we're not going to pay 1000 When I walk in, they don't give us half off. So I, I introduced him to the people. Hey, this is Mark. Dress him up. Boom, boom, boom. What? On, on a different pair of jeans for every day of the week. And, okay. Uh, and then so you had we, like a Monday pair, a two, okay. And then he took me Rolex shopping. And, and he bought a new Rolex for every single guy on the team. I want to rock right now. I'm Shaq D's and I can't get it down. Yes, I'm internationally low. And I'm known to rock a microphone because I can see it. If you could have Chuck or Shaq as your teammate. Who are you taking? Shaq. Okay. Well, that was a little Shaq. too quick there. I mean, you could have given <laughs> Charles a little I mean, love there. I love Charles, um, but Charles is not commanding a uh, triple team.
Double team, not triple team. Shaq, <laughs> you had almost quadruple team. I get the ball like big man. Yes, yes. Hold him up right there. Yes. Boom. Look at, the, look at now. Look at your right arm as you spin into him. Go ahead. No, no <laughs> this is throwing. You said okay. throwing. I'm not in. I'm, I'm already here. Lock. Boom. Boom. Got the okay. ball. Lock. I'm Go going. Ahead, spin. I'm going to shoot. No, no. Lean on me. No, lean, lean down. So lean and spin. Boom. Just because I hit him in the head don't mean I'm throwing the ball. <laughs> okay. Just because he ran in. He's not he's exactly. Exactly. He's he's exactly. This. this is intentionally throwing the ball. I never did that. Jack's effectiveness is where he catches the ball. The quick spin move. He gets deep in the lane. Mark Jackson a little slow getting down there. And then he just punishes him with that elbow. Reggie's not buying any of this. You lean on me. Spin. Boom. Got you. Bam. Okay, that, come on, Reggie. That very move cost me a championship because <laughs> he is, was, and is the most dominant player Big man of our generation. We didn't see Wilt play. Jack was the most dominant ever, man. If you can't hold, if you can't dislodge, if you can't push him in the back, there's no way you're stopping him when he's five, seven, ten feet away from the basket. He was just too strong and too gifted. And great footwork as well. Shaq is the most dominant. Hold on, time man. R- Rick Smith is 7'4". If he play like a big man, I can't bow him in his face. Yes. You're 7'1". That's so three what? inches. Man, come on. You're acting like, like it's like that. Between you With two. With his big like head, that. he up there. That's even more. I, he I had never a bigger, did that. He had a bigger target. Like this. He had oh, a bigger target. It. Come on. Well, and, and after you hit him once, it was done. Yes. Let me explain something to you. When you talk about how big these guys are, that's very deceptive. The reason you are hitting them in the head is, first of all, you are so physically imposing, they just can't stand up. Yeah, and force, and so they, they, to get their to get their center of gravity, they have to be lower. Bend, they have to yes. lower their center of gravity, and, and that gets you hit in the head. That's 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 right, right. That move from right. 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 It's learned it from you. When they go like that, when they bend down, put all their weight, all you got to do is spin. Man. So when you spin, they're off balance, and boom. I touch him with it a little bit. <laughs> but, you, <laughs> but you never <laughs> threw. No, no, you never, I never threw, threw an elbow. Yeah. And checking him and, and being undersized and checking him. I, I, I didn't really get him throwing that bow, but the problem was we wanted him to go over this shoulder because you knew he was going to make the jump hook. But through. you never saw him throw, throw a bow. Oh, well, I've seen it many times. No. Oh, my God. As a guard trying to come down and double, you threw it. So, Reggie, you're buying you buying Shaq's demonstration over here? Did I intentionally throw a bow? Intentionally, you want me to answer your question? Yes. Yes, because you use that. Stop to, it. Can I finish? No, can I finish? not. You use that to your advantage because you were the most physically intimidating person in our league for 15 years. The so ball had nothing so, to do with it. So, That's how you played so, me. So when a center, so when whoever you hit got hit once, they felt it and they never came back. That it's means every time you were coming, <laughs> every time you're coming now, they're not there. That's an easier shot. You hit them one time. They're going to feel it. Look, I will say this. As many times as we all, because we've all come down and doubled you or had to play you at some oh, point in time, got hit, I'm surprised you didn't kill all of us. <laughs> because, <laughs> no, I'm serious. What is something that one of them players that you got off of them or, or two of them that you got from them that you, like, this stuck with me longer than any other thing that stuck with me with any other player? Probably the three, the three individual players would be Shaq, so and LeBron was probably the three I took the most. From Shaq, I took the way that he was, like, I was so I was, a, I was so quiet. I was an introvert, like I didn't talk much. I didn't let my personality show. Shaq kind of opened me up, you know what I'm saying? When he gave me the nickname Flash, and you know what I'm saying? Like I bought into the Flash character, mm-hmm. and like he started opening me up, so I started being more like, you know, I started speaking for myself. Yeah. I started saying what I wanted. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like I, I started being a little, I had a little more pizzazz to my Leader. to myself. Yeah, so he kind of brought that side out of me. Yeah. Shaquille O'Neal, we watched Kazam. <laughs> That's not a shot, Blue Shaq. Chip. That's Blue not chip. a shot, Blue Shaq. Chip. That's not a shot. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, we grew up watching Blue Chips, like you said, and we, we grew up seeing them players and your first championship to go through that and win a championship with them players. What did that mean to you? That was that was un, that was unreal, bro. You know what I mean? First of all, to be, you know, when coach when when Rouse made that move to bring everybody in, like yeah. first of all, man, my first year, like I was just having fun, and we was just having fun. We went from being a terrible team to a good team at some point, and I just enjoyed being in the NBA, making some noise, and then trade happened, Shaq come to Miami, everything oh, changes. Yeah. The major headline around the league tonight: the Los Angeles Lakers and Miami Heat. 
agreed to a trade that will send Shaquille O'Neal, one of the greatest big men of all time, to sunny South Florida. Uh, well, first, my reaction, well, I was a little saddened at first because I knew I was losing my buddies and, and Lamar and Karan and Brian. Um, but at the, on the other end, I was very excited. I mean, I'm playing with one of the greatest players ever to play the game. Hey, Dwayne, he was pretty courteous. No sooner than he, when he got there, he showed up and said, hey, let's just be straight about this. This is not my team. This is the young fellas team. This is Dwayne Wade's team. When I got there with D-Wade, you know, I was like, you know what? I'm older. I'm tired. It's your team, D-Wade. First thing I did with D-Wade, we went to a restaurant, and I told him all the stuff that happened bad with me and Kobe. So as soon as we got there, the first day, I said, look, man, you heard this, you heard that. Me and you ain't going to have no problem. You the man. Take as many shots as you want. Mm -hmm. he needs to I need to get 28-10 so. uh -huh. to make everybody feel good, make myself feel good, so, but just, and we never had problems. And I said, I'm telling you this, D-Way, because this could never happen between us. I said, tomorrow when I go to the press conference, it's your team. I'm going to follow you. I'm going to be your consultant. I'm going to be your consigliere. You're the godfather. I'm the top lawyer. We work together. No, it's not, it's not my team. It's not just Shaq's team. It's, it's our team. To be able to go from that to like then the next team was like, hey, Shaq, Shaq here. Yeah. It's time to win the championship. I'm like, wait, wait, what? Right now? <laughs> I just got here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but instantly. You know how it go. Yeah. You gotta he do what you got to do. up in the big truck and say what he's saying. He's going to bring a championship to Miami. <laughs> Remember this? I'm going to bring a championship to Miami. I promise. <laughs> I got to put some work in. Like, I, I got to go. I have a question. Do you yes. think at your... Because of your strength and size, it also penalized you with the rest when you got fouled. Of course, all the time. I mean, I was always upset that I couldn't talk to the referees like uh, Sleepy Barkley over there and like Reggie Miller. They, they used to say something <laughs> to the talk that if, if I say it, I'm out for a month. <laughs> so, you know, it, you know, it, it kind of penalized me, but, you know, somebody made an interesting point. They're not going to take care of one guy and penalize everybody else. Hmm. Think about that, you know, because I was the only one of my kind playing at the time. Mm -hmm. So they're not going to take care of me and get everybody else upset. So they take care of everybody else, and then I would just have to deal with it. Watching frustrated players swarm around all 325 pounds of a determined shack spinning toward the basket was like watching those tiny old biplanes trying to take down King Kong. No player ever had to endure more physical abuse. Yet not only did he endure it, he excelled in the face of it. I never, I never cried, I never complained. I just 28-15. Yeah, it That's was, it was said often, it's said time and time again, the most difficult guy to referee in basketball. Yeah, no question. I think things could have gotten a lot worse if he hadn't been composed and, and able to, to deal with all to that. To me, this is the mark of a great player. When they start changing rules because of what you do, then you're a great player. So when you become a guy who that league makes different rules for, that's when you know you arrived. Early in that season, coming off the floor in the second or third game, I met him out on the court and said, what was the greatest thing Will Chamberlain did in his career? And he said he averaged 50 points a game and 40 rebounds a game. I said, no, that's not it. He averaged over 48 minutes a game. Do you think you can do that? He said, if Will Chamberlain did it, I can do it. So Shaq played 48 minutes a game. For how long, Shaq? <laughs> John Sally came in my office about two weeks later and said, do you think you can start limiting Shaq's minutes? But he got in shape, and he won the MVP, and he was great that year. Great year for him. 60-some points against the Clippers. That night, it was my birthday, and we had a party. So you know, usually, I, <laughs> so usually I go home before eat. or after the game. No, after the game. In the game, big party. So you know, usually I go home, eat lunch, take a nap, and get ready for the game. But we playing against the great Keith Kloss and the L.A. Clippers. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm taking the night off. I got to get ready for the party. So on this day. I broke all my rituals. My ritual consisted of after shoot around, go home, eat two turkey club sandwiches with extra mayo and a diet coke. <laughs> Take about a three to four hour nap. No, seriously. He's not lying. He's not lying. Why not? Two turkey club sandwiches, diet coke. Take a nap. Go play. Go dominate. And you know, Clippers, we always manhandled and beat them. So 
<laughs> that day, I said, you know what? Since I got to the party tonight, I'm going to let Rick Fox and Kobe and those guys take over. I ain't going to do nothing. So the whole day, I'm setting up the party. I'm calling, hey, make sure the drinks is there. Make sure the is there. I'm taking the night off. I got to get ready for the party. I got the Bentley. I got my suit. So I'm going to go, you know, because because also what I was going to do in that game is I was going to foul shave. Foul shave. We're going to beat him. So if you know what foul shave is. No. Oh, what's okay. that? Foul shave is when you get in the game, you get two quick fouls so you can sit down. Right? <laughs> so, I was going to foul shave. I wasn't going to even play this game. I was going to get three, four quick fouls. I wasn't going to do nothing. I was going to be in some. Uh, so anyway, what a great, what a great no, game plan. To have. <laughs> so anyway, I, I, get the the sandwiches. Game, I get to the game and I'm dead tired. I'm like, I'm not going to do nothing. Uh, so wait, game, wait. Hold on. The party's the night before or the night no, after? No. The, after the game. After the game. So why are you tired? <laughs> because I didn't take a nap. And I'm out all day. I'm out, you know, calling people, going to the mall, getting the jury. I got to get the ice ready. I got to get the derbies. I'm getting suits made. I got to get the car washed. I got to get the rim cleaned up. So I get home about four. I don't even get to take a nap. I get back on the highway because I live an hour away from Staples at five. So I get to the game and I'm like this. So, I'm like, so you know, the game start. We get out there and they and they killing us. Now everybody looking at me. And the Clippers are killing us, right? Clippers are killing us, and then Phil, he starts yelling at me. And all the guys start looking at me, so you know, I'm like, all right, give me the ball. So now I got to play, I didn't get my nap, I'm getting tired, so I'm, I'm, just, I'm just scoring. So I look over to the bench, and I see one of my idols. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was, I guess he was a special assistant coach. Telling Keith Cross how to stop me. I see Kareem saying, you got to do this, you got to do that. <laughs> now I'm pissed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Kareem, Laker, oh, now so I'm like, give me the ball. So I'm, I'm scoring, I'm scoring. and So I got the ball one time, and I, you know, shot like a little sky hook, you know, just to pay homage to him. And he did me like this, Ernie. He put his head down. So now I'm super pissed. You know, Phil's calling other players. I'm like, we're not running that right now. Turn five. Get it to me every time. He's like, why is it not? Get it to me every time. I'm going to make Kareem look at me. And Kareem never looked at me. Hey, no. It seemed to me like it seemed to me like he was talking to the guys. I'm like, oh, don't let him do this. You got to play him like this. You can't play him. So I'm like, oh, okay. You, you going to teach him how to stop me. Watch this. So I'm starting to go to work. And I'm getting the ball. And I'm looking. I'm like, oh, you got Pete Chill cut on me? You're not going double? Barbecue chicken, chicken alert. alert. Barbecue chicken, barbecue alert. chicken alert. Ernie I'm going. So they had Pete Chilka sticking me. They had um, they had Anthony Avon sticking me. And then they tried the hack shack thing, and I had to get my elbow in like my name was Dennis Scott. And I just, <laughs> <laughs> so you, you know, as players, like, you know, you get 30, right? And you're like, man, I can get 40. So I got 40, right? I was like, man, I can get 50. So now that I got 50, guys are like, go, go get 60, go get 60. <laughs> he just put his head. He never looked at me. Happy birthday. You know, I guess 61, I'm throwing lobs, and I'm actually kind of upset at Phil because I think we had like five minutes left. I think I could have went for 70 or possibly 80 for that game. You know, Phil took me out. And he took me out. I think he did that because he didn't want me to score more than Mike. That's what I think. That's what I think. <laughs> <laughs> That's I'm what saying, I think. I'm saying, I'm saying, 61 points, 23 yeah. rebounds yeah. against I was hot. Keith Claus. Video game. The great. Yeah. And still great. went to the party. And then. It was a hell of a party, Ernie. <laughs> All the oh, there, the game the Where was it? The, the party was at. It was at. A, it was at uh, an aquarium. Mm -hmm. It was nice. And I pulled up in that white convertible Rolls Royce on them. What was the music playing? What uh, music playing? Uh, <laughs> Bow down. <laughs> bow down. Bow down. Bow down. You go back to 2000. Bow down. Cause I'm oh, yeah. It was me and Uncle Jerome. Uncle Jerome. Oh, Jerome was crying, in the house. I was like, oh, great game, great game. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, what was your first impression of Shaquille O'Neal? Well, it's almost like a, a rhino on there, on, on, on the court to play against. <laughs> you know, you know, I, a couple of years ago, I went to Africa to see a real rhino, but it's not much, much of a difference. <laughs> hey, yeah. I want to ask about your first impression of Shaq on the court. It's scary. Um, this is the dude, though. You know what I mean? Even though you got that mentality, you know, this is that one. That you that you really admire and 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 um and respect as dominant on both ends of the court and um 
I used to brag to my friends a lot and say, you know, like after we played the Lakers, you know, I get to the crib and be like, yo, you seen I laid Shaq, then you, you know what I mean? Like, you seen Shaq try to get that and I put that thing high up off the glass on him, you know what I mean? And and, and that, that, that gave me added confidence to myself to whereas I felt like if I can score over Shaq, I can score over anybody, you know what I mean? Because I wanted to be little Shaq on the basketball court. Could you take down Shaq now? Come on, man. You ever <laughs> seen a guy fight? Lakers are trying to get out and, and, and break now, but the wrong people are shooting. Now, I wouldn't want Fisher necessarily to take that Shaq that fast. Uh-oh. Oh, and there's a swing by O'Neal, and they've got a blue on the field. A real fighter throws the first punch. I'm not going to walk up to you and let y'all <laughs> slug me in my <laughs> jaw first. I got to get y'all first. Uh, of which, right? does okay, yeah. 1999. It's about a real fighter. Good. Chuck. Uh, All I want to know, wait, wait, we said, what'd you what? say, the winning, oh, winning guy is winning? Well, the, the guy on the top is the winner. Yo, bro, I'm yeah, on I'm top. <laughs> Shaq? No. You ever see him win a fight? <laughs> Shaq can't fight a lick. I hit him in that big old gut. Because I can't, I can't reach his you big old head. <laughs> so I hit him in the gut, and that gut, and then it'll bring him down. And then when he come down, I clock him. This would happen. You can slow down if you want to. I wanted to show the left to my man, so when he went for the left, I wanted to hit him with the right, but somebody grabbed me. But when he got me down on the ground, he didn't do nothing, so I know we wasn't even really shit. But check this out. After that fight, we both got in trouble. I love this angle of right here, my mom Shaq. I love this angle. Yeah. Like this. See, the, she, the left. Hey, you know what's setting him up for the number five, grab my arms. Hold me. Get him, Tino. Tino, hit him. Look at this. See, the left. See? Oh. See? See how it just showed him? That's called Bobby Weezy. That was just a little Ali. You know, some people, like, jump all out the way. I just, like, subtle. Subtle just subtle. Let's do it in slow-mo. How was that? Oh. You know what's funny about that? <clears throat> what? A lot of people don't know that Charles' mother and my mother were best friends. Oh, yeah. So the day me and Charles got into an altercation, the phone rings. It was an Alabama number. And his mom, don't you put your hands on my baby. You need to stop fussing at each other and get a grip and behave. <laughs> and then my mom called, what y'all doing out there fights? <laughs> but, you know, you play long. I played 19 years. Oof. You come across a lot of characters. A lot of years. But, you know, for me, hands down, it was Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> I mean, I, I, most I can, of the stories I can not can yes, yeah, yeah, I, I can't that. repeat most of the stories. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, every day, I think he literally would come to practice every day thinking of how can I make everybody laugh. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but he, did, it, did it actually make you laugh, or, that, did, you, or did it just make you shake your head? A little bit of both. <laughs> bit of both. <laughs> but, but I mean, I mean Shaq, 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 I remember uh, one time we get ready to play a big game against Dallas. As a matter of fact, it was, I think it was a TNT game. We need, we're fighting for playoff position. And I, after the, the pregame meeting, you know, I go in the bathroom, I come out, and Gordon Girichek is laid out on the floor. And, like, the trainers are, like, trying to wake him up, you know. Shaq, Shaq choked him out. Like, 18 minutes on the clock, we're getting ready to go out to play, and Shaq, like, put him in the sleeper hole because he was talking too much. He was talking trash to Shaq. So Shaq, <laughs> that's, that's one funny thing. He's not here to right defend there. himself, Shaq. <laughs> but if it was funny like, bully. G Hill, I, I told him, don't mess with me, G Hill. I told him. Hardest person I've had to guard was Shaq. Hardest player I have ever got without thinking is Shaq. Shaquille O'Neal. Shaquille O'Neal. Because he's beast. He was so big and strong. In his prime, he was the hardest player to guard, period. He was the most dominant center in the world back then. Luckily, I didn't have to guard him very much, uh, but the very few times that I did, it was uh, painful. He had me about 200 pounds, and I had not a chance in life of stopping him. The scariest player on the last other league was most definitely Shaquille O'Neal. Shaq. Uh-oh, let me run for cover. Shaq, by far. Shaquille O'Neal. Definitely Shaquille O'Neal. Shaq, look out! He rocked the whole gym. Seven foot, 300 plus pounds, muscle. He's an absolute monster. Dominance is out of this world. Three taking a sledgehammer. You know, he was too strong. He was too big for everyone. He would dunk on every play. Shaq, oh, what a power move by the big guy. If you draw that charge, you'd be in the hospital for a month. Ooh. Yeah. Shaq was scary. Yes, he was. <laughs> 
I hear all the young guys talking about Shaq, right? And I remember Alvin was a teammate of mine yeah. in, in Detroit. And, and so we're playing Orlando, and Shaq hauls off, and he hits Alvin Robertson. And he hit him, and Alvin did like this. I remember that. And here all over O'Neal, Shaq wants to be let go of. He's sick and tired of, of Lambeer hanging all over. Lambeer, the quick foul call. Oh, punches thrown. Robertson and O'Neal. And there were two solid shots landed. Matt Kukas now charging out. And look back. He was like, and, 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 I said, and I grabbed Shaq and I go, Oh, you hit the wrong guy. Yeah, yeah, don't you hit, hit the, guy, yeah. You hit the wrong guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Shaq swung first. And that was the complete collection of Shaquille O'Neal's greatest stories. If you did enjoy this video, please help me out by hitting that like button, subscribing if you are new, and hit that notification button so you never miss an episode in the series. Comment down below which player you would like to see next, and see you next time.